a very warm welcome to you all to this debate that we're going to be holding this afternoon. I definitely will be calling on you for questions. They don't have to be Jeremy Paxman-esque, but I will be calling on you. That's the only rule. If you want to say something, speak up towards the end. Now, this is the studio where ITN filmed the agenda, and that's the kind of style of the debate that we're going to be doing today. The question we're going to be posing, is B2B marketing facing a crisis of creativity? These are the bright minds sitting here at the table, although they looked a tiny bit worried about that <laughs> when you mentioned that, Claire, before. But nonetheless, we are going to be prodding them and poking them and getting those ideas flowing. Now, recent research by Man Bites Dog highlights that B2B marketing leaders believe that creative content based on a compelling idea is their most effective sales tool. However, they also say that a lack of ideas is now posing a serious challenge to them achieving their marketing goals and ultimately the objectives of their business. So should we be concerned? That's the question we're going to be posing. Is B2B marketing facing a crisis of creativity? Well, the bright minds that I'm joined by, senior marketing leaders from across tech, professional services and media to debate this very question. We have David Keane, head of marketing, Google for Work, Northern, Eastern and Central Europe. David, say hi to everybody. Hi to everybody. <laughs> Good stuff. Excellent. We also have other fabulous minds joining us. We have What If Agency um, joining me here on my left, um, on my right even. You can tell that I don't know my right from my left. That's a good start. <laughs> Fantastic. Nice to meet you, Matthew, and thank you again for joining us. We have Paul from Grant Thornton, who's okay. at the end here, Claire, who introduced ourselves earlier, and Simon from ITN Productions, who I work with a lot, telling stories effectively in this marketplace. So let's start by reflecting on some of the stats from Man Bites Dog Research. 95% of CMOs say that their company needs to differentiate from competitors based simply on ideas. 92% believe that to be more creative, BTB brands require a radical new way of working. But what does that look like? Does this mean that B2B marketing is facing a crisis of creativity? So Matthew, I come to you first. Is B2B marketing facing a crisis of creativity? And what does it look like if it is? Um, I think you could probably say that we are facing a crisis of creativity, but I would be inclined to kind of take it up a level as well. Um, and I'd be inclined to say that we were in our world of a proliferation of different media and a different a proliferation of different information, I, th I would say that we're, we're facing a crisis of cut through as B2B marketeers. And, and I would break that down into three things. Um, the first one I would say would be curiosity, actually understanding what are our clients interested in and getting some insight into what they might care about and then directing our creativity to something that they're going to care about rather than something that they won't. Then I think the second thing is creativity. So it is important to come up with some ideas. Um, but then I'd say the third thing, and because I'm on a bit of an alliteration role at the moment. So <laughs> go with it, go with it. <laughs> so curiosity, creativity. But then I'd also say confidence. The confidence to come up with um, provocative, opinionated things. And I think that's the thing that gets you cut through. So, um, yeah, in summary, I'd say creativity, yes, but not before being, getting really curious and getting some insight into your clients uh, and not without the last bit, which is getting confident uh, and being provocative. Paul, let me come to you next, because I'm wondering if, if part of this... Um difficulty in becoming a risk taker is also because of where we've been in the economy. The fact that we have been in recovery for some time, maybe now the focus is turning to growth, but before it was all about becoming efficient and, and maintaining that efficiency rather than big ideas and growth. Is that something you'd agree with? Um, I would agree with that. I think, I think the, the, the language is turning very much to growth um, and I think related to that is trying to I identify ideas uh, that will prompt and stimulate growth. So I think our brand, Grant Thornton, we have an instinct for growth. That is our strap line. Um, and so very much where our, our content was focused on trying to help businesses get out of that, that difficult economic situation, looking at cost cutting and efficiency, the, the conversation is moving much more towards new opportunities, new growth markets, and what will help a, a dynamic organisation take that next step to growth. So I think it has changed the nature and the feel of the content. But I guess it's how to get to those big ideas. Um, let me come to you, David. Um, I mean, Google, that very word says to me, big ideas. Obviously, I've never worked at Google, so I don't know if that's the case. Perhaps you can tell us. But from your perspective, do you agree with what Matthew's saying, that there needs to be more risk-taking? 
I'm going to step slightly, slightly on a tangent from what they've said. Uh, to me, the crisis is with culture, not necessarily with creativity. Um, there's a lot of creativity in the organizations that I speak to on a day-to-day -day basis, regardless of the type of organization. That creativity isn't bubbling up to the execution level or bubbling up to the cut-through level um, to actually get to people. So people have amazing ideas. When you go and talk to people on the shop floor or on the operational level in any business, they generally know what the challenges are. They've got incredible insights. They have great perception. When you talk to the boards of those companies, they sometimes are not getting those feeds up. So there's a cultural element to how those ideas bubble up, how they get to the top, how new ideas are sparked up, and how when there's a thousand ideas or a million ideas in an organization, how you kill off the ones you don't want to go with and run with the ones that you do want to go with. And that really, to me, is the secret sauce. It's all about creating a culture and an environment for ideation, allowing people to ideate safely so that they're not penalized for coming up with ideas that somebody might not like, and then getting rid of as many ideas as you can to take the best ones forward. Kind of a Darwinian approach to that ideation process. All of that, to me, sounds brilliant. I think I want to work at the company that does oh, all no. of those things. <laughs> I think the big thing is, though, and I'm sure lots of people recognize that here, that for some companies working in a very traditional way, it's very hard to make that leap. You know, any small change is a big deal, but a wholesale change in culture, mm -hmm. of course, takes time. Now, Simon, Obviously, with ITM Productions, part of your job is to tell stories through the medium of video and to reach out to people that way. Some of the companies that you're working with, do you find this, that presenting a new idea and saying, well, let's try it this way? Because mm -hmm. video, of course, is, is something we already understand. So it's taking an old format, if you like, to translate a new idea. Yeah, I mean, in the question there was, um, you know, stated, do we need a radical new approach to, approach to working? And actually, we're, we're seeing some of our clients doing some things that they wouldn't have done uh, only a few years ago. So on the one hand, we've got clients who are becoming, in the B2B marketing space, more like publishers. Um, and that's a really interesting space for us as a, as a news producer as well, because um, it's regular topical content but it's not necessarily of the production values and budgets that you might associate with, with content. Um, on the other hand, we're starting to see uh, clients who are, instead of sort of selling the product or the service, they're starting to see the value in selling the narrative around that product or service. So really looking at storytelling, but um, doing it in, in new ways to the market, not necessarily new ways to B2C content creation, but. So I, I think there is definitely, a, uh, uh, we're at a bit, bit of a tipping point with content and, and from my point of view in, in the video space, it's a really exciting time to see how, um, you know, the, where the potential is now, where, where is it going to go and, and which direction are people going to go in. Claire, of course, you're partly responsible for this research that you've done. Where, where do you want to th see things go? How do you want to see things change? And I, and I guess today, uh, part of what we're trying to do is to get some practical guidance, perhaps, on how to change things. So what do you want the picture to look like, perhaps, in five years? So I was really interested in some of the things the panel mentioned. So uh, Matthew's crisis of curiosity, for example, mm -hmm. and also talking about how ideas are surfaced in organisations. Often creativity is seen as a blank sheet of paper, but actually if you really understand your customers and you listen to the people that are there on the front line, as David said, actually a lot of those ideas are there in the first place. It's about surfacing that mm -hmm. thinking. So it's not about imposing something new, it's about discovering it within the organisation and bringing that forward. So really, what I'd like to see is for leadership to truly value big ideas because you will get an exponential return on your marketing with a great big idea versus a very small idea. We often talk to CFOs about delivering a return on ideas. The fact that you put the same resources behind something really compelling versus something really small, you're going to get a bigger return. So I would like to see leaders valuing big ideas, and that's a cultural thing that comes from the top. And I'd like to see more democracy in organisations so that we can really surface the customer insights and the thinking that are already happening at every level. I'm hearing lots of murmurs there of agreement. <laughs> I come to you first, Paul. Yeah. Um, well, as, as an example, we've just, we've just completed a, something we called a global jam, where we went out to every one of our 40,000 people across 130 countries and asked them for their ideas as to where our future strategy should go. And we got 40% of our workforce contributing ideas on a three-day social media event, and we ended up with about 200 
very well formed ideas that came from PAs, from payroll teams that said this, these are the improvements we think we need to make in the organization and the, genuinely the global leadership team were shocked.